Hello there and welcome back. Now, if you've watched this channel for any amount of time, you probably know me as kind of one of the boot guys out there, one of the boot reviewers. But a lot of people don't know that I used to really be into leather bags. And what ended up happening is not that I lost interest, but at some point you sort of have found what you're looking for. There's not really anything that's too new on the market. A lot of things are just kind of rehashing the old stuff. But regardless, I felt like a video like this, where it's sort of a roundup of the bags that I've had over time, the ones that I still have, and the ones that I currently use, I thought it would be really interesting because I love videos like this, especially when you get to see somebody who, after their initial review, got to really use it and know its idiosyncrasies, um, the things that make it great, the things that make it a pain in the neck, and which ones you end up using more than others, because I think that, in the end, is more telling than um, a review. And I try to do a lot of research and a lot of use before the review so I can actually get a good idea of how these things operate, but... After having the availability of all kinds of different bags, well, there are a few that I use more than others, and ones that I've kept, and ones that I've sold, ones that I've given away in order to support doing more videos. So, today, we're going to do a little bit of a roundup of some of the leather bags. I'm not going to show you all of them. That would be like an hour-long video that I still have in the ones that I currently use. Now, the one that I want to begin with is this guy right here. This is the Minimal Messenger from Bassador, and this was kind of the one that started it all for me. It's a very simple messenger bag, as is, uh, you know, suggested by the name Minimal Messenger. Just a simple leather flap on the inside. You have one compartment. That's pretty much it. Uh, it's very, very simple. And I love it for that. It has a small back pocket on the, on the reverse here. Besides that, um, chrome tanned leather, brass hardware, nicely put together. This video uh, that I, I made on this, though was really like the start of, of a, what I didn't realize was going to be a big time um, interest of mine. And it was the first time that I went to a craftsman, well, in this case, a craftswoman's shop and watched how they make things. And, you know, the way that she would burnish the edges and the way that she would uh, do things, um, you know, it was really, really eye opening. And this is a beautiful bag. You know what? And come to think of it, this actually has two compartments on the inside. My mistake. It's been a long time since I've used this. I don't use this one currently. And uh, it wasn't long after I got it that I realized that this one just wasn't doing it for me. And, and it was really based on one thing, and that was the lack of a top handle. When I would put this in the car and I'd go to grab it, there was just kind of leather on top here. There wasn't something to grab it off the passenger seat and bring it with me. Uh, you would have to kind of gather up this shoulder strap and sort of pick it up that way. Uh, it's a beautiful bag. I, I really like it. But it's one that I, I don't really use. I haven't used it much since I got it originally. And because of that issue, the lack of a top handle, which again is, is, is actually the design of this bag. Most messenger bags don't have a top handle. I realized it was something that I wanted. So going forward, I only bought bags with top handles. Regardless, this is a beautiful piece. And sadly, I don't really know if Bassett are still in business. Uh, I, their, their social media has pretty much gone silent. I haven't seen anything from them, so I hope everything's all right. I ended up getting, uh, they made me a tote bag for my wife out of leather for her birthday. And um, I hope that they're still in business. I just, I, I don't know. Next up, this is the FC model from Cravar. I also have their Alpha, but I, I didn't want to really, you know, cover too many bags. This one I actually used a lot. And now this one does have a top handle on it on the back side here. Has a shoulder strap. One of the coolest little attachments that I've seen. I love the way that they use buckles and the way that their buckles are kind of, they're sort of uh, rough looking. You know, they look like they're made in a workshop. I, I love that about this. And I found that a bag like this with two large front pockets, I actually used quite a bit. Uh, I, I used to really only like bags with one main compartment and that's it. And then I would sort of use other, you know, ways to compartmentalize things and, uh, and do that you know, to really organize stuff inside. I realized that something like this with a big main compartment um, and the two large outside pouches was actually really, really beneficial. And I would put my external hard drive in one and maybe like charging cables and stuff in the other. And then I would have my laptop or, or whatever on the inside. And it was great. This bag is wonderful. And, uh, you know, the only reason that I don't carry this one anymore is that it's been replaced with a bag that I think is, is, uh, is superior. But 
I keep it because it's it's a wonderful bag. It really is. So this is the Cravar FC. This is one that I would absolutely suggest to anybody, especially if you're a student, because it's affordable. Uh, it'll be with you for a long time. A lot of times, these, this is made in Indonesia. You have to be careful with Indonesian leather. It can It's sort of hit or miss. This one seems to be just fine. There's no issues at all. As a matter of fact, I think it's gotten quite a bit better with age. It's softened up, and um, it looks wonderful. So the Cravar FC, great bag, but um, I don't really use it all that much anymore. This is one that I did a review on relatively recently, about a year ago. This is a company called Bleu de Chauffe. And if, you, if you've seen their Instagram stuff, they're all over the place. I think that they are some of the, the most artistic looking bags. This is a beautiful, beautiful bag. I love that leather, the way it's, it's sort of pebbled. You can see the natural variation in it. It's, um, it's a gorgeous thing that really takes the leather and puts puts it front and center. I also love the way that they've done their handle here, that they've made it sort of one piece by, I believe it's called scything when they actually uh, thin it down and sort of taper the ends and then they've stitched them together. Really, really nice. I think that this is not, even though it's large, and this is, I mean, very, the capacity of this thing, it's like cavernous. So the issue with this bag is that when you pick it up by the top handle, the only thing's connecting the straps to that top handle is the leather itself, which is pretty thin and supple. Now it's gorgeous. I think that over time you may have an issue with either the straps pulling through. Um, that leather basically is the weak point. If you really load down your bag, which this bag is large enough to be loaded down. So if you have one of these or if you're interested in getting one, I would suggest using the shoulder strap as much as possible. But it is, it's a beautiful bag. I, I love this thing. And that's, uh, again, why I keep it. I think this is a great overnight bag, a uh, weekend bag. But I wouldn't use it as like a main briefcase, especially carrying it with that top handle. I just think that uh, without something that's a little bit sturdier going from the top handle to the buckles themselves, you're really only relying on two rivets and the integrity of the leather itself to hold all that weight and... Uh, I think, I think, be honest with you, I think it was a little bit of an oversight in the design of this. Now, one that I did early on, and I probably have more hours in than any of the other ones combined, is this guy right here. This is the Custom Hide 1945 briefcase. The reason that this one has so many hours on it, days and days, is that it was the only bag that I have that would fit my work laptop, which is a 17-inch HP, which is a very large laptop. I like the screen size, but the problem is, is it just won't fit in anything. This, though, would take it. And now this is made in a workshop by one guy, and it's it's styled after an old briefcase. I think it was a military-issued briefcase. I love this look. Absolutely love it. As a matter of fact, this thing really does... It deserves some TLC. I have conditioned it before, of course, taking care of it. But, you know, it's been in a storage bin for a little while now. This is a beautiful bag. This is one that I... Um, I wouldn't change a thing about it. I wouldn't at all. It has a big steel plate underneath the handle here, which goes over here. And again, like I was saying with the blue de shelf, um, th you know, the straps go around the load and then is supported by the uh, steel bar, which is then connected to the handle. Basically, it's a basket that kind of holds everything together. And this guy right here, it'll last for a long, long time. The back has smoothed out nicely from kind of rubbing against, you know, my, my leg and, and just uh, being used. This thing is wonderful. It really, really is. And this is, in my opinion, the best handle I've ever felt. It's it, it fills your palm. It's still kind of squishy. What he's done is he's rolled up some leather and put it inside of this rather than something like a, a PVC pipe, which has no give to it at all. It's just a, a, a beautiful bag. Really, really nice. And um, one of my favorites, one that will always be in my rotation. Now here's one that I uh, thought I would use more than I have. I did use it on a few trips. This is the duffel bag. I believe it's, um, I can't remember the exact model name, but it's by a company called, they were called La David, and they changed their name to just David. And it has a similar feeling leather to the Blue de Chauf. Um, Not quite as nice, but it is nicely made. They have nice Riri or Rai Rai zippers, depending on how you pronounce it and which snob you're talking to. The reason I stopped carrying it, the reason that I went with uh, carrying this one instead over here, 
is that it, it's supposed to collapse like this, so you can sort of stuff it underneath the bed or put it, you know, on like a shelf or something like that. It's not exactly like a box, right? I found that's sort of the issue when using it. So it does, it performs its job flawlessly, no doubt about it. I noticed though that it's so floppy that you can't kind of stand it up. Like, even if you do sort of try to square it out, it always wants to collapse in on itself. And that can be sort of a problem when you're trying to actually load it up with all of your clothes and stuff. The other thing is, it's an expensive bag and I feel like they really kind of cheaped out on their, their shoulder strap. I would have preferred a leather shoulder strap on this. Uh, you know, I understand maybe it was a cost saving measure. This works just fine, but on a nice leather bag, you want a nice leather shoulder strap. So this is one place that I feel like they, they missed the opportunity to make this a much more premium product. Other than that though, it's really nice. The handles are good. Um, it's, it's nice looking. It's just, uh, if I have to carry two duffel bags, this will be the second one. But the first, which should be no surprise to anybody, is of course my Frank Clegg signature duffel. Now, this has collapsed somewhat because it's been used. It's, it's uh, you know, normally it stands up pretty nicely. But watch this. So when I go ahead and open this guy up, same thing, Riri, Rai Rai zippers on this. When I go ahead and open this thing up on, on uh, you know, if you're going to load your, your clothes into it or whatever, you kind of put it on your bed and it stays open. The mouth of this thing is gigantic. You could put like a box in here if you wanted to. I love the way that they did this. So it does open up completely square. This was the first bag that I got, which really, oh, I guess the zipper's on this side, which really let me experience the feeling you get when you you touch something and you you use something that's really really premium the bags that i've shown you to this point are nice there's no doubt about it but they do pale in comparison to the frank clegg this thing is uh i think i even said in my review that this was the best leather bag briefcase duffel bag any of those things that i had tried to that point and i still think that this is probably the nicest duffel bag that you can buy today just beautiful and again, went to their workshop, saw how they're made, met the people behind the company. Uh, it's just it's just so special. I love this thing. And this is another one that I will never, ever give away. I've thrown my camera gear in here, carried it to New York City, done so many things with this bag, and it just, it just, it takes it all, it takes a beating, looks better for it, just like you would expect from any good leather. Nice leather shoulder strap, burnished edges, just beautiful. Everything about this thing is, is top notch. Love the Frank Clegg bags. Now, the other one that I have on the table here is this guy. Now, this isn't a leather bag, and I've never done a review of this. This is my old Filson original briefcase, which is in their rugged twill. Now, this is a bomb proof bag, right? I know, leather. Leather's king, right? When it comes to durability, though, I think that their rugged twill, Filson's rugged twill, is a close second to, to uh, leather. This is some seriously tough stuff. This is a vintage piece. I picked this guy up for like 75 bucks on eBay. And the guy clearly didn't know what he had because these usually go for quite a bit of money. It has the old style talon zipper on there. Open super smoothly. It has... um. You know, the old Filson might as well have the best tag on here. It's, I mean, okay, it's dirty. Look at this. Look at the bottom here. You see? It's dirty, all that stuff. But nothing on this is broken or even showing t signs of, of real wear. I got it in. I treated it. I conditioned the leather. And it's, it's great. Now, this is a wonderful bag. There's no doubt that these are great. And this is one that I keep going back to. I think it's just, it's just, uh. You know, it's going to be a, a, a an all-time favorite for forever. The issue with this bag, though, is that it does have a zipper opening to the main compartment, okay? Like I mentioned, that Talon zipper, old school, slides nicely still, beautiful. The problem with this, though, is when you go to slide your laptop in, you got these big old teeth that are just waiting to scratch the outside. Now, that's not such a big deal if you have a sleeve that goes over your laptop or a case not really a big problem at all, but if it's naked uh, and I usually don't have anything on my laptop, then, you know, that is a real problem. But, you know, besides that, there are workarounds to it. This is just a, a great bag, which is slim, stays out of the way, seriously tough, 
that that rugged twill is crazy. I would love to get a duffel bag made out of out of that rug uh, rugged twill. I just I think that it would last basically forever. Okay, finally, I'm gonna show you the bag that I use currently, which I feel the same way about this bag as I feel about the Frank Clegg. This bag really, really set the bar when it came to um, briefcases. It's not big enough to hold my 17 inch work laptop. So this one is used for my own personal laptop and the stuff that I do with YouTube and all that stuff. But when it came to, to finally looking at this bag and using it and feeling the, the quality and looking at all of its, its little details, I haven't found anything that's been its equal. Maybe some of the Frank Clegg briefcases would be close but I think that this one here is just, it takes the cake. This, if you haven't already guessed, is the Moose brand leather from the leather shop. This is the Messenger 2, I believe it's called. And it's 100% veg tanned leather, which ages beautifully. You can get it in several different stages of sort of, um, you know, kind of false aging where they dye it a little bit. There's a lighter one than this, which is pure veg tan, which almost looks pinkish white. Um, then there's one that's darker than this, which almost has an amber color to it. This is sort of the middle version, but everything about this bag is perfect. The stitching is perfect. The, the layout is perfect. The size is perfect. The shoulder strap, everything that they've done on this bag, I, I wouldn't change a thing. It has a top handle to it. It's, it's just built so nicely. There's rivets everywhere. There are... The stitching is done perfectly. There are reinforcements everywhere that there might possibly be wear sometime. It's reinforced. This bag, uh, it really, really is the, the creme de la creme as far as I'm concerned. And I've looked. There are a couple of other bags which I would like to try, maybe. Some of them have been uh, discontinued. Some of them are more art than anything else. But really, when it comes down to it, if I had to run out in a fire and I had to take one briefcase and one um, duffel bag, it would be the Frank Clegg signature duffel and this here, the Messenger 2, which is just uh, by, by Moose Brand Leather, which is, it's um, it set the bar extremely high as far as just being well thought out and executed in a way that is unique, but uh, incredibly useful and user friendly. <sighs> this is the one right here. It's beautiful. Now, there are plenty of other bags that I reviewed. Marlando, I reviewed two of their bags. The Nutsack bags, which have all been great. Um, I, you know, I kind of i am drawing a blank on the other ones that I've reviewed over time, but there have been many, many of them. And I've noticed that I've just either stopped using some of them. Um, some of them I gave away to friends who maybe were going to a new job or to college or whatever the, the case may be. And I, I thought it would be a, a nice gesture. So uh, some of those things I gave away. The ones that I really like, though, I, I kept for myself. And it's funny when I look back at all these different bags and the reason that I like them. But I'm hoping that this will give you a, a good summarization of my experience with leather bags. Now, it does... <laughs> I do have to mention that the most expensive bags happen to be my favorite, okay? And it's not because they're the most expensive. It's because you are getting something for that increased price. You're getting finer finishing, better materials, all those things, components. You know, you're getting something for your money, and that's what you want. But boy, oh boy, these are, are something truly special, real heirloom pieces. So that's kind of what I wanted to do, guys, a little bit of a leather bag roundup. And I haven't shown you everything that I have because, again, it would take a long time. I have probably six or seven other bags over there, which you've seen, which, you know, just didn't make the cut. Sorry. Life's just not fair sometimes. <laughs> so anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know which one is your favorite, which one you're currently carrying, or if there are any which I have, uh, I really got to check out. I would be interested to hear about those too. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you next time.